I would like to tell you a story which is not easy to hear, not because of the content, but uh, it's so likely that it happens to many of us here. But only if we reflect upon the topic will we be able to change some of the facts that I will share with you right now. The day will come where we will witness the death of our beloved person ever. We can only prevent this if we die before her, but then it will be her problem or his problem. And when that day arrives, the pain that we will suffer will be unprecedented, never felt before, because that beautiful dead body will be in the hands of the undertakers and they will turn it into ashes or we will bury, bury the person in a place that is well has no meaning for us probably then we go back home we feel so lonely and we will break in tears just the beginning of one of the uh, most uh, serious crises that can affect a human being and as the days go by the absence of that person will be more and more present more evident and it will be so difficult to live a life that is no longer meaningful and we will wonder so many questions and we will try to find answers uh, asking people of reference but their words will be so empty for us they will just feel empty and will uh, seek in the eyes of children trying to find an, an explanation but we won't be able to share a sincere narrative w w with them and we will ask plea for a sign from the dead that uh, that person has not abandoned us forever that he's there or she's there but we will just hear the echo of our own cry and as the months go by we will feel those uh, arms that comforted us um, as well not comfortable anymore because uh, we are not capable of being the persons we were back in time and we will feel more isolated and we won't accept comforting and we will feel alone and if we're lucky we will be referred to a professional a psychologist that maybe uh, diagnoses us with uh, prolonged uh, mourning that is part of the ICD from 2008 uh, disease that is part of our western cosmovision is how we understand death and life here in the west and then we have a label so that everybody can understand what is our problem and then we have a new place uh, a place to cry for an hour a week even if uh, the only thing we want to do is to you know uh, bless and, and, and curse and cry at home eight years ago a good friend of mine killed himself and I have been interested in the use of ayahuasca when you lose a loved uh, one and I would like to share with you some of the results that we have achieved so far Hemos observado en un... We have observed. We have seen in a group of 50 non-religious uh, Westerners that the period severity of grief uh, went down in uh, a month when they took ayahuasca, I mean, six times at least. That's the average. So 50 people went to the Temple of the Way of Light, a center that was in Iquitos, and they don't follow a specific program for the treatment of uh, grief, but they take, uh, they take ayahuasca in that framework of a program. And as you see there, you know, uh, pain alleviation was sustained for a year. We also know that uh, pain alleviation in part was mediated because ayahuasca helped them accept the irreversibility of death and because subsequently they could take distance from those thoughts and feelings and emotions that uh, 
suffocated uh, them before, but we know that ayahuasca can ease many other psychological processes that still need further investigation, not just when it comes to alleviating the pain because of the loss of a loved one, but to grow as human beings, as people through pain or despite pain, despite um, grief and sorrow. We know because there's another study that has been published and we collected the, the testimonials of people, 30 people that had taken ayahuasca for their mourning and multiple psychological processes were described, but the topic that the thing in these experiences was actually three main topics were distilled from these from these experiences, and you'll see this in this uh, quotes. Many people would uh, describe that ayahuasca led to an emotional catharsis, and as the word means itself, it's it's a purification. This was a father that had lost uh, a child, never born. And he said, I cried from the grief, the loss, the shock, the sadness, the emptiness, but I also cried in gratitude for having been able to have my wife by my side during the entire process. So this other side that this painful experience resulted in since it made us grow as individuals and as a couple. Other people would uh, express uh, significant biographical parts of their life under the effects of ayahuasca they could see with other eyes. And in those cases, um, a transformation took place in the internal inner representation that they had about themselves or the dead one or their relationship. This person, for instance, that has lo had lost uh, their father and there was an ambiguous uh, relation they had, especially since he remarried another woman. He would explain about the death of uh, his father. Ayahuasca took me back to my childhood, showed me memories of my parents and other relatives, uh, a time when I was loved and accepted, helped me see the subsequent events and how they affected my father, the fact of losing my mom when I was uh, 10 and my sick sister and how my father coped with this. He f and found new love, and that is what he needed. He remarried. He didn't love me less. He just needed a woman more, so it was the father who had remarried. And uh, other people would express that those mourning will meet the soul, the presence, the essence of the loved one, opening up an opportunity to solve, to solve pending issues. So the cosmovision that they had about life and death and existence would transform. Another person here losing the partner. When I was in the session, she appeared in my mind. My body turned upside down as if the earth was calling me. Then she, uh, I felt her coming. I felt her presence under the earth right in front of me. I couldn't see her face, but I could feel that she was okay and that she came to tell goodbye. I cried a lot, kissed the ground, told her that I love her and let her go. And after then, after that moment, I started to accept her departure and understand that she is now in another dimension. And last but not least, we know that the therapeutic impact of ayahuasca in uh, complicated processes of uh, grief can be further promoted when taken in a um, constructivist uh, environment, big environment because ayahuasca evokes these experiences that we've seen with a very deep, profound therapeutic value, difficult to achieve with other psychotherapeutic techniques. And the um, constructivist process maps the techniques in a very broad uh, fashion. So this helps assimilation, decoding of the experience, accumulation, uh, this experience about the world and the vision that we have. And it allows to deepen in, t in the sense, in the meaning that these experiences have for us and they, then they can be anchored in our biographical story so that we can make the most of them in our therapeutic process. About months ago, we completed a first pilot study with the aim of adapting an intervention protocol, constructivist uh, protocol, to work with uh, consciousness modification therapies. Seven people took three times ayahuasca and other seven people did three sessions of uh, breathing in a, what in altogether was a 14 session process. And as you can see here, uh, symptom alleviation for complicated grief processes dropped significantly for both groups.
And despite the fact that in the group with an holotropic uh, breathing, the clinical impact, so this, in this uh, ratio that was right that you see here, ES, that is a clinical impact that's very high. It's the size of effect, and it's very, very high. The ayahuasca group, uh, well, it was twice as much, and variability in psychological processes was uh, very little. But six months after, symptom alleviation became very even, very equal for both groups. This does not mean that ayahuasca is the panacea for complicated mourning processes. There are multiple details to be assessed, and of course every case is different and every life story is different, but it helps us take a step forward and keep on researching on ayahuasca in the grief processes, but especially because there are two fundamental aspects that ayahuasca contributes, and I would like to highlight them here. Ayahuasca allows to transit through mystery. That's the first thing. Uh, since, uh, I mean, in all civilizations and great cultures, the humankind has uh, used one of its main virtues, which is the capability of imagining. And we've created uh, labyrinths and bridges and paradise and in fantastic worlds to broaden and enrich the cultural framework to project on which to project the existence of human being. But Western uh, men, materialistic, empiric, has refused any sort of belief. Uh, it's refused any sort of uh, belief and it's crushed uh, imagination, we could say, since we don't have a single piece of information to prove the existence of those sacred spaces that could uh, welcome us after death. The Western civilization has refused all sorts of beliefs and with this, they, they were assuming one more belief, the fact that when we die, there's nothing. The fact that when the body dies, consciousness is diluted or it vanishes, disappears into nothing. A nothing difficult to imagine, but after uh, years of research about the topic of consciousness, we, we still don't have any piece of information that proves that consciousness is a sub a byproduct of the brain. We don't even know whether it's in, in us. So if we are guided by the scientific method, honestly, we need to admit that uh, as long as we don't know about the origins of consciousness, death will be one of the greatest mysteries that we need to face sooner or later. And ayahuasca helps us transit through the mystery, not by imposing a dogma or cosmovision or a belief. It's a unique authentic uh, personal experience, ayahuasca, allows the mystery to deploy in us with total creative freedom and every centimeter of our guts and bodies know how to transit about the multiple territories in soul where everything is alive and mountains breathe and the dead comfort the living. Second second trait. Ayahuasca means connection. Connection, unity, and community. In the West, when we're faced with a crisis, the, uh, our society is individualistic, and that goes against us. I want you to know that, qualitatively speaking, it is different to feel grief alone or accompanied. It has nothing to do. In the West, it is... Uh, constant, you know, we need to add the fact of feeling isolated, non un not understood, alienated from the world. We are privileged because we have inherited from the indigenous traditional cultures, not just ayahuasca in itself, but the ceremonial context, relation, community, where to share this sacrament, an ayahuasca ceremony, is a luminal space, you know, where what's spiritual and what's terrestrial uh, coexist, what's ancestral, what's the present problem coexist, and when, uh, you know, the sorrows are shared in a space with a re with the with the register of meanings that's so broad, identification with others is, is uh, very deep, also is connection, the connection with the community, of course, much more than at home or in a professional's office. The situation has nothing to, to do, but 
on top of this, ayahuasca can dissolve the Cartesian reality that we have created in the West because we feel somewhat separate from the reality that we belong to, separate from the others and from the world. Ayahuasca can deploy in us a universe that's infinite where the personal fuses with the, what's universal and men and women are just a microcosmos in the macrocosmos that we belong to. Let's hope that when our loved ones die, when they pass away, we can, well, give them a funeral in community and bring them back to a land uh, to which we belong. Hopefully cemeteries will be the sacred mountains that they were back in time and our ancestors can live in a place, in our cities, in our environment and hopefully we will go there and we can cry there and have ayahuasca there with our family and then find ourselves and on the other side and find the answers to our questions in ourselves and share this with our children so that they understand that life ends and how, re how responsible we need to be to live it fully Hopefully, hopefully, let's wish we can transit through death in the community for a whole night, for the whole night, and when the sun rises, we can appreciate the mystery of life in a deeper sense and with a deeper look. As Ben was saying in the morning, the best way to predict the future is by creating it, creating the future, and it's only up to us. Thank you. Okay. Muchas gracias, Deborah. Thank you very much, Deborah. Thank you. We have some time available now. Discussion or questions? I don't know, it would be great to have a little bit of light to see the, the audience, if it's possible. Un poco de luz. ¿Se puede poner un poco de luz, por favor? And we have, uh, I understand we have a mic. So if you wish to, if you wish to have a question for uh, any of the members of the panel, please come down here and feel free to do that. Thank you. I thought I could hide behind the seats, but I guess I have to be up front here. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. One, I want to just thank every one of you. Our brother from Brazil, your work is amazing. The service you instill in these men, uh, the turnaround, viva, well done. And our brother, the professor, you made me laugh quite a bit. That I'll never forget that picture of the goat torturing the feet in the end. And I know you shared much more than that, but uh, balance, really, with ceremonies. But the, 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 that picture is going to stay in my mind forever. <laughs> Uh, and our brother from America, it takes a lot of courage to talk about what you have to talk about. So I really salute you, and it's quite a journey you've been through, and I'm glad you found the community and some peace within yourself. Well done, bro. And uh, the lady from, uh, from Peru, uh, holotropic, I do, I'm part of Santo Daime. I'm also a recovering drug addict and alcoholic. And uh, I did holotropic, and uh, I did it one time but I had quite an incredible experience. And I would say it was an experience where I had a massive release, energetic release, and uh, it's beyond what I experienced in ayahuasca. Uh, almost like the toad medicine, the sapito or the bufo, where something massive was released from me. It was an energetic release. And I practice now. I have a friend of mine who's a holotropic breathwork therapist, uh, and she learned with Dr. Stan Groff. And uh, it's amazing. So if anybody hasn't tried it here, I highly, I highly recommend it. Uh, without medicine, like you said, you can achieve the same states of heightened consciousness. And uh, I want to address something our sister, Dr. Gonzalez, brought up about uh, grief. Um, so two years ago, I lost my mother from Alzheimer's. She had it for 15 years. And it was a very slow death, a very painful death. And my mother and I were super close. I have a brother and a father, but very different. And uh, it was painful in the moment. I sat with her as she died and took her last breath. I held her hand and I saw her color change. I cried briefly and then I had to take care of many things. And I thought, okay, I was there, I dealt with it. Two months later, I went to a Santo Daime ceremony in Toronto and I wasn't thinking about that. The ceremony was a cura. 
And all of a sudden, I felt the presence of something very dark come on top of me, like dark. Everything went black, and my head went between my legs. And all of a sudden, in this vision, I saw my mother, and she was crying and crying. And I started sobbing, like crying, like I've never cried in my life. And this is a room full of 50 people. Uh, it was a very cathartic process, but a healing process. And I saw her grief. I saw all the things she was grieving. Her illness, she had some, she was betrayed by my father, heartbreaks. I saw everything and I felt it. It was incredible. And then all of a sudden the darkness lifted and I saw her in a different light, like a golden light in the heavens. And some of these angels were putting wings on her back and she looked at me like, what's going on? And I smiled and I'm like, just go, go. And, uh, and she flew away almost like blowing me a kiss. And I was crying first from all the pain, and then I started crying from the joy. And I didn't go there looking for resolution of my grief. I didn't go there thinking I had grief to complete. But to echo what you're saying, that since that ceremony, two months after my mother died, I no longer had any repressed grief. If somebody asked me, so how are you feeling about your mother? I said, I feel, I feel great. I was with her when she passed away, and I know she's in a better place. I know. I saw it. I felt it. And, and that crying that I cried like I've never cried in my life, that was, that was uh, incredible because it was healing. I did grieving for her and for me, but that's the power of some of these heightened states of consciousness that the medicines can offer. Uh, so I agree 100% with your research. And uh, it's a very powerful medium. And, and I, th I hope, like you, that we have... Uh, the possibility in the future to properly say goodbye and to celebrate, uh, you know, the people we love so much and not to hold it and repress the grief and add it to all the other shit that we take on board in this life. So God bless you all and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your, your experience. Eh? Please, would you, would you come down here to the mic? Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Deborah, for uh, sharing all these uh, studies. I know you are doing it with a lot of passion. Um, in your, uh, um, from your knowledge and in your experience, what is the state now of this uh, grief therapy and, and how long it can take until we can see actually some, some of these integrated in our mm. society and in our uh, lives mm. and have resources actually for the people we see they are in this state or, or for us, mm. ourselves. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Bueno, thanks, pero por tu pregunta. Thank you for your question. Ben was saying this, but I would like to repeat this because the best way to predict the future is by creating the future. And this is not something that one single individual can do or one single institution. Every country has its regulation and its culture and its cosmovision to understand not just life and death, but also the way in which these tools can be integrated. But uh, about the potential of the plant and knowing about the weight, the cultural weight that uh, death has here and uh, the, 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 the burden, let's say, only together, only together can we start breaching, breaching the gap and we can get to know all together formulae or, or, or ways, ways like an affluent to, to the river, how to pave the way, because it's not just uh, transformation or the transformation in the way we understand death, it's actually transformation in the way we understand life, because it's a non-materialistic way of understanding our existence, and this is something that we have deeply rooted in ourselves, and we need to, well, broaden it, broaden the scope, and and solve it. So I don't know what the future will hold for us, but I know that the only way we can change it is by acting together. Thank you. Please. Hi, this is a question for Dr. Frexa. 
I hope I say it uh, good. Um, you spoke about experiences with borderline disorders with ayahuasca. I would like to, to hear more about it, maybe if you have any experiences with schizophrenia, schizophrenia uh, bipolar, uh, obsessive disorder, and if, if there is any, yeah, any, any chance or any possibility for this type of pathology to benefit from uh, ayahuasca. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your interest. Uh, I have to admit that schizophrenia, bipolar disorder are the bottom of, the, of my list. Maybe I am wrong. And I have, uh, you heard me that I don't mix up Ayahuasca experience with uh, acute schizophrenic episode, but uh, I, I am afraid that in schizophrenics and in bipolar patients, an Ayahuasca experience can uh, facilitate the onset of a new episode. But you know, there are negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Oh, the impoverished thinking, impoverished speech, lack of motivation, uh, lack of social interest, uh, affective flattening, and there is no medication for that. Here, I can imagine that Madre perhaps can do something, but uh, yeah, that would need a very careful research. I know someone who insists and he is bipolar himself, that ayahuasca can help bipolar disorder. But I have seen in a couple of people who were on the borderline spectrum that they entered into a hypomanic state with this kind of ego trip and uh, spiritual narcissism. So that's why it's done on my wrist. Which is on the top, trauma work. That, for this reason, I will stay here for the next panel because Ayahuasca, I think, is excellent for trauma. I was among the first ones who, more than 10 years ago, I recommended Ayahuasca for PTSD. I was among the first one, you know, and we know there are uh, war veterans who are going to Peru, you know, and they return with improved PTSD. So trauma work is number one. OCD, yes, yes. Uh, if psilocybin can help with it, why not Ayosko? And there is no tolerance. You know, in psilocybin, people can develop tolerance, but not to Ayosko. So, and panic disorder, I have very good results. So sometimes, anyone, just imagine, if someone can handle a huge ego dissolution in Ayosko, for that person, a panic attack is nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We have a really uh, quick question and brief answer. If anybody uh, feels called to one more question. Thank you. Hello. Thank you all for your wonderful speeches. Um, I have just to add on the last question regarding the complicated cases like bipolar and um, schizophrenia. What do you think about uh, microdosing for these kind of uh, situations? I'm over here. Oh, okay, it's me. The other I'm, side. I'm not against that. Doctor, <laughs> Doctor Fresca, she's over there. <laughs> you don't want to reply to that? Would you like to reply that? Oh, I uh, supposed it was me, but um, I said I'm not against it. Oh, you're not against it. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> anybody would like to say? With thorough follow-ups. Yeah. Uh-huh. Would anybody else like to add to that? Yeah. I don't have an experience as such with uh, schizophrenia and bipolar disorders. However, I know that there will be a conference here about bipolar disorders with ayahuasca and not just micro dosing, but high doses also ayahuasca. So there's 
quite a lot of um, lack of knowledge about what affects, uh, what's good, what's bad for people with these issues. Ayahuasca is a complex uh, decoction, and of course, uh, I mean, it's best if you attend the, the panel that will discuss this. I hadn't seen it. There is a session on it? Okay, great, I'll, I'll go. Como comunidade espiritual, religiosa, uma igreja. As a spiritual, as a spiritual church community, we have with us people who are psychiatrists, psychologists, psychotherapists that also care for people that are part of the community, also people who are not part of the community. And when some people arrive there to be taken care of, they become patients of those. Uh, doctors uh, and we also use this micro doses because um, we don't uh, withdraw them from whatever they are taking because the micro dosing doesn't interfere with their medicine whatever medicine they are taking and that provides safety and security to that person and this person feels safe because he's being treated and accepted in the community as a as a person that is that is part of it and that eases the the work of the therapists and as the therapists by observing the situation by observing the patient improve can, can see this they may decide to e change the medication or withdraw some of it but there's also this uh, scientific monitoring uh, that religious and spiritual monitoring is also there to provide self-confidence to the um, client we could say to the patient but, but yes we do use micro doses Thank you. Members of the panel for your wonderful contributions. Thank you all for your attention. Wish you good afternoon.